based on popular demand, I decided to make a quick video here of how to build one of these GPS trackers. This one right here is our first version, so if you want to just go very simple, all you need is a dark color like this, make sure it's big enough, and then just the uh, attractive GPS tracker. That tracker lasted for two days, and then the battery was dead. But if you look for a simple solution, which is going to give you some data back, probably over the period of two to three days, um, this would be very easy to do. The tracker right now is on Amazon for about $32. Uh, the color probably, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks. So you're under $50, uh, plus a subscription of this Tractive Tracker, which runs at about $100 uh, a year. But there is also a cheaper version. It doesn't give you the full history over basically infinite days. So I wanted to have the full history so I can go back weeks and months even and still pull up this history of uh, the data we've tracked. Beyond the tracker, what else do you need? You need a case. There's the Pelican 1010 case. I opted for yellow because it's very visible. Um, it's a waterproof case, uh, ideal for our use case. So this tracker goes inside and uh, keeps the, the tracker, once we modify it, uh, outside of the elements. So next up is the battery pack. Keep in mind the internal battery of the Tractive Tracker is only 800 milliampere hours, whereas these batteries, these big ones, um, have 10,000. Now the problem with the 10,000 milliampere batteries is the size. You will, you will find out here pretty quick that this particular size does not fit. Um, there were two different batteries on Amazon. This one, which is slightly bigger, ends in the numbers 114. The battery pack, which fits in here nicely, ends with the numbers 100. I can give you some dimensions here real quick. So this battery is about 60 millimeters wide, about 100 millimeters long, and about 10 millimeters thick. The thickness doesn't make a big difference because you have plenty of space in this case. However, the length is the key right here. So this one being uh, right around 10 centimeters fits in here very nicely. The battery, which is too big, measures about 11.5 centimeters, so 115 millimeters. And that is probably about five millimeters too much. So that's the whole reason why this thing doesn't fit. Width-wise, it would fit pretty nicely. Just the length, it's about five millimeters too long. So this 10,000 milliampere battery should get you at least two weeks, I believe. I have not tested it all the way out. Uh, I have one in the field right now with a 10,000 milliampere battery in it. It's been running now for over a week. I think we had uh, around one and a half weeks now. And it's still running, still sending data. The only thing uh, I'm seeing in the app is it shows me 0% battery level, which just means that this app, this tracker itself, can't handle um, this big of a battery because the internal battery of this one actually is a 3.8 volt battery, where those LiPo batteries are 3.7. They're both LiPo, but this one has a the average, I guess, or the nominal voltage is 3.8. This one's 3.7. And then obviously uh, we're talking about a, a way different um, milliampere uh, value here compared to the old one. So you can't trust that battery uh, indicator anymore in the app. You're going to have to basically go by uh, what I'm telling you at this point, or once you have enough experience with it, um, then you play around with it yourself. Uh, maybe you can even measure, and I don't, I don't have the capability, but maybe you can even measure um, the average draw on this tracker and then calculate how long this thing should last. Right now I'm going to go by my gut feeling. Once we hit the two-week mark, I want to start the retrieval process and try to get the tracker back. So that's the, those are three pieces, tracker, case, battery, Obviously, you know, if you look at our older design here, you need a strap. I found this strap on Amazon. This is actually not nylon. This is a different material, some some uh, other plastic material. I can, I'll put a link in the description, but this one compared to nylon is supposed to um, be 
more resistant to elements like water and so forth and doesn't deteriorate uh, so so quick so once you have the strap you obviously need some sort of buckle and uh, these tri glides to adjust size and actually put this thing around the hog's neck those are pretty straightforward um, there are some tri glides which are better quality than others uh, i believe i got this one from a some sort of technical website they're supposed to be better in terms of actually keeping this strap at the position where it's supposed to be so uh, it shouldn't slip as much and therefore widen the color so I opted for the slightly more expensive tri glides versus just the cheap ones now the next step is to take this tracker apart you can see it's a two-piece design you want to pry this open along that line be careful there is a charging port back here with a magnet behind it you don't want to damage that and there's also a little bit of an antenna so as you do that try to be as careful as you can um, you want to use an exacto knife or some some sort of sharp sharp tool to pry it open so let's try that now i usually do that while um, using some sort of vice or other tool to keep it in place but now for the video i'm just freehanding this whole thing hopefully don't cut myself that was a good sound we can see even though it looks pretty ugly once we try to pry it open the screwdriver it is coming apart here a little bit All right, so we had some plastic tab back here and this thing breaks in the process but it doesn't really matter since we're just uh, gluing it back together uh, you see the uh, contacts back here for the battery charging connection this is the 800 milliampere battery um, this one is also just glued in with some double double-sided tape so we will be able to uh, pry that away be careful not to, to uh, damage the circuit board underneath. There you go. In this case, there's three double sided tape strips which keep this together. The next task is to use a soldering iron and uh, get this battery off those contacts. Be careful not to connect these terminals together, they're pretty close to each other. So, I'm not an expert in all these things. But I'm a tinkerer and I know how to trial and error things. So, so far this has worked out for me in my life. So I'm going to solder off, um, I think, the negative one here first. Right, negatives off. Go on to the positive and make sure you try to not uh, get those contacts too. There we go. So now one more piece we need here for this whole project are these female pigtails. Again, I believe they're JCT connectors, but I will put a link in the description. So in the next step, we will solder this pigtail onto that circuit board. Again, this needs to be a female connector so that we can connect the male adapter from the battery. So I think that's a good contact. It does not seem to touch onto the positive. That's it. Terminals are not touching, it looks like. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a simple person. I'm going to just use the soldering iron to make a little nudge in here for that cable. Cleaned up pretty good. But yeah, that's it for the uh, the tracker. 
modification. Uh, get that pigtail on here. Make sure that contacts that do not connect. And then just as a test, you can uh, hook up your battery and you should see the indicator light come on and hear an indication sound that it's uh, coming on. There you go. Success. So I didn't have any super glue left, so I'm going to use this Gorilla Glue. Just gonna run a bead out here on the outside. But this will do. Look at your lid. Just so here's the magnet. Um, over here are the contacts, so you wanna put this in in the right way. That's it. I'm going to leave that uh, here for a while, let it dry. While that glue is drying, I'm going to start to get this strap prepared. So the trick here to cut this without having this to happen right here. I use old scissors and my little friend over here, the blowtorch, to cut this and fuse it or seal it at the same time. as I started to glow and that should be hot enough and just like that you want to make sure you're somewhere where there's no smoke detector because you can see that thing is smoking quite a bit right now and obviously don't touch and don't let it sit somewhere where it could uh, catch something on fire so now that we have our strap cut we are going to attach this now to the case. We have these um, brackets or these loops on the side. I'm gonna put this through here. And now technically you probably could use one of those trig lights. I'm not sure how good it's gonna hold up. I would probably go a little further out with this so you have more after the trig light so there's less of a chance this all slips through. What I'd like to do is, what I did here in the old one, uh, it looks kind of ugly, definitely not the best job, but this was like the first time I've done it, uh, a cross stitch. So two, two uh, sections here cross stitched, um, and this has been holding up really good. So I'm going to do the same thing uh, on, on this particular one. I bought this um, tool here, which is called a speedy stitcher. You see the, there's a little bit of um, that, I think it's called yarn or string and um, and then you do your stitching. The whole stitching part, please look it up somewhere on YouTube. There's a speedy stitcher video out there you can use uh, to do probably a much better job than me. For my purposes, this, uh, this is good enough. Somewhat of a frustrating process, but you can use a sewing machine and probably get this done much faster and better, but I don't have one. So I'm uh, just relying on this little handy tool here, speedy stitcher. And that's that. Should be pretty strong. Now since I made this strap the 36 inch long end, I'm going to just put the uh, buckle on this, this side here. And that's it. So this is the one side all done. Now we're gonna go to the other side and stitch on another strap. And that should be it. So I'll get this end on here, fairly short, close to the case. Can't go further up than this. And as gravity pulls this case down, that buckle is gonna be on the side. Once you put this tracker on a pig, what you wanna do is you wanna put a uh, zip tie around this whole case here so that this doesn't come undone, though that latch is pretty, it's pretty solid. Um, I wouldn't think that there's a way for this uh, case to pop open, but you never know. Uh, at the end of the day, you're putting this thing on a hog. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, the next thing you wanna do is put a zip tie around this buckle right here so that 
uh, this thing doesn't come undone for some reason. By now I'm guessing our tracker should be uh, somewhat dry. Right here. Uh, that's still pretty tacky. Uh, so glue needs to dry some more. Um, you have one switch on the side here, which is um, the switch to turn it on or off. It's a long push. Uh, sometimes as you take these trackers apart, you might lose the functionality of this uh, switch. However, as soon as you plug that cable in, uh, the tracker comes on by itself. So it shouldn't be a big deal. This code on here is something you need for the activation of this tracker. Um, once you do that, you are all good to go in your app. Don't forget to put some sort of phone number uh, on the inside. Once you put it on the outside, um, this is gonna rub off uh, over time. So anything you put on the outside is probably not gonna last very long. You know, write your phone number on the inside here, put a business card inside, something like that, just in case somebody shoots your pig uh, or finds this thing once it uh, fell off or whatever. Um, that way they can, they can bring it back to you. So that's it. That's all you need to put a GPS track on a pig. Uh, a case, a strap, way too much stitching, and you can totally skip that and use those track lights. Battery tracker, and you want to put some, some foam in here so just so this thing doesn't, doesn't move around. I just use this foam you would usually get in uh, technical cases or whatever. Um, put this in there like that. Uh, that way it doesn't add too much stress on the case and you don't risk that you compromise um, the, the waterproof capability by uh, adding too much, too much pressure on it. But yeah, connect this, this battery like so. Wait for it to turn on. Foam. Close it up and good to go. Don't forget, once you put this tracker on the pig, make sure it's sending you GPS data. So don't let this pig go <laughs> before you have confirmed that there's actually GPS data coming back. Um, but once that is the case, you are ready to go. One more thing, now that I see that, something I could have done better just now. You can see that this, this piece right here is just hanging off a little bit and only one row of stitching is holding onto it. If I would have laid this over so that both ends um, are equally long and covering everything or just move the stitching down a little bit. I could have uh, used this extra stitching row to keep this together. So what, what I might want to do right now is just to be safe, I'm going to do one more row of stitching right here um, and that way this is not coming off ever. Just some things to look out for. Again, uh, I'm just a tinkerer here so some more stitching, and um, then this, this case actually goes to somebody who's watching our channel. So uh, somewhere just a few hours, hours north of us, he wants to trap some and uh, do some GPS tracking too. I offered to uh, put this case together for him, and uh, maybe we'll do some filming with him here in the, in the near future once he has a pig trapped, and uh, we are ready to put this GPS tracker on it. So you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, should be an interesting episode.